yo we yo yo halena yo we yo yo halena yo we yo yo halena yo yo we ha yo yo we ha yo yo we ha we ha Chukalisa means abandoned house in the Choctaw language. Before Chukalisa was abandoned, around 1550 A.D., the site was the home to a group of Native Americans who built the mounds, and Central Plaza still visible today, along with the village area that surrounded the complex. The village and mound center represent a late prehistoric settlement and a long series of Native American settlements in the eastern United States, extending back to at least 8,000 years B.C. In fact, over 5,000 years ago, the area that now comprises the southeastern United States was where Native Americans first began building mounds and geometric-shaped earthworks that were a gathering place for many of their activities. Watson Break in northeast Louisiana, a circular earthwork ridge with mounds, was constructed by 3,600 years B.C. About 2,000 years later, the Poverty Point site, also in northeast Louisiana, became a regional gathering and trade center for many Native Americans in the Lower Mississippi Valley. In Tennessee, the Pinson Mounds in Jackson and Old Stone Fort in Manchester represent the next stage of earthwork construction in our region, beginning around AD 100. The Temple Mound complexes of the Mississippian culture, such as at Chukalisa, are the latest prehistoric Native American examples of monumental architecture in the Mid-South. Chukalisa was built around the same time as the mounds at Cahokia near St. Louis in Moundville in Alabama. So who were these Mississippians? The Native Americans we refer to as representing the Mississippian culture of the Southeast flourished from about 1000 AD until European contact in the 1500s. Their descendants today include Indian tribes such as the Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Quapaw, all of whom lived in the broad regions surrounding the Chukalisa site. They built flat platform mounds and on top often constructed buildings such as homes for the rulers, as temples, or for other unknown purposes. The large mound at Chukalisa contains such a building in prehistory. The mounds that began as low platforms were added to over time, perhaps at the end of one generation or the death of a leader, until they obtained the height we see today. The Mississippian people relied on corn as a primary food staple along with hunting. The Mississippian culture is particularly noted for their well-made ceramic vessels that contain a wide range of effigy forms. These vessels and other finished goods and raw materials were part of a trade and exchange network that extended from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico. At Chagalisa, these trade goods are represented by copper, marine shell, and other minerals. Imported stone raw materials were manufactured into a wide range of tools, including grinding stones, knives, and arrow points. Chukalisa was abandoned prior to Europeans entering the area, though we are not certain why. In 1541, the Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto traveled through the region, but apparently did not visit Chukalisa. He may have visited the nearby parking site in Arkansas. Regardless of de Soto's precise route, over the course of the next centuries, disease brought by the Europeans, along with warfare, decimated the Native American cultures in the Mid-South. Over the past 500 years, several nations claimed the land that Chukalisa is on. By 1800, the bluff was considered the property of the expanding United States. The bottom lands between the bluff and the river were farmed early in the 19th century. By 1854, the improved land was run as a cotton plantation. Nineteen enslaved African Americans were purchased as laborers along with the land, its buildings, and farm animals. These and other slaves were freed during the course of the Civil War. In 1936, the land was purchased by the state to create the Shelby County Negro Park. This park was to be the Jim Crow era equivalent to the whites-only Shelby Forest located north of Memphis. The archaeological site of Chukalisa was discovered by civilian conservation corps workers preparing the new park. The University of Tennessee began archaeological excavations at the site in 1940, but the work was soon halted in response to World War II. In 1955, archaeological excavations resumed at Chukalisa, 
and the first museum at the site was opened in 1956. In January 1962, Memphis State University assumed administrative responsibility for Chukalisa, and the site quickly became a central focus of the archaeology program in the Department of Anthropology. Chukalisa supported a continuous series of field schools and was the subject of numerous research projects. In 1974, Chukalisa was listed on the National Register of Historic Places and in 1994 was declared a National Historic Landmark. For the past 50 years, Chukalisa has benefited from the contributions of Native American Indians, who have been many of the primary public interpreters of the site. Through its exhibitions, tours, and special events, Chukalisa continues to provide educational experiences for the general public of Memphis, students, and visitors alike. Over the years, the museum's interpretive focus has evolved. Out of respect for those who first lived on this land, the exhibit of human burials is no longer visible. Gone also are the houses that encircled the plaza. They were not a true reconstruction of the prehistoric past, but instead primarily served as settings to accommodate visiting tourists. Our interpretive exhibits today incorporate greater input from Native American communities, along with the wealth of archaeological research. We invite you to take a tour of Chukalisa and visit the C.H. Nash Museum named to honor the contributions of the archaeologist who spent nearly 30 years conducting research at the site. Be certain to visit our newly opened hands-on archaeology lab and hike our nature trail that incorporates a recently dedicated arboretum that extends through one of the prehistoric village areas of Chukalisa. Be certain to sign up to receive a monthly copy of our electronic newsletter, Chukalisa Anochi, to be kept informed of special events, educational resources, and new exhibits at the museum. Our goal is to provide a range of educational programs to promote greater awareness and appreciation of the accomplishments of the Native American people of the Mid-South, both past and present. We hope that you enjoy your visit.